Hi everyone, um, this is Junk Journals 101, Building Signatures. And so um, the first step in creating, uh, for me, for creating a journal is I like to build my signatures, stack them on top of each other, and measure them to make sure everything's going to fit into my um, book that I have or to know what size book that I'm going to need. So um, I wanted to show you real quick how I build the signatures because there's some confusion on how to put a signature together. Um, there's really for junk journals no um, standard format. The only thing that I like to do for any journal that I'm doing is make sure that the paper that's on the outside of each signature is full size. It's a full size or whatever size that you're at. So that would be like um, my digital paper that I'm using or it would be a piece of the cardstock that I'm using or it would be um, a piece of the graph paper um, something I usually like to stick with something graph paper is kind of thin I usually like to stick with something that has a little bit of um, structure to it because then it helps hold the signature together better um, the reason why I talk about this is because if you put um, an envelope or say a doily on the outside of your signature, because they are shorter, they have a tendency to want to flop around or fall off because this whole sheet is easier to hang on to when you're trying to fit it and sew it into your, into your uh, spine. Um, and then if you capture the doily or the pockets, um, the envelopes, I'm sorry, inside or something that's smaller inside the signature has a tendency to stay in the fold and stay in your signature to where you can sew it into your book easier. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start out and pick up some papers. What I've done here is I've made piles um, and I've separated as to what they are. So this, these two are digital papers, but one is folded with the lines to the outside and one is folded with the print to the outside. These are specialty papers, so resume paper, um, re receipts, um, the full size, you know, receipt paper, the type of stuff, graph paper, this is composition notebook paper, my doilies and my envelopes, and then my dictionary papers and anything that's specialty sized um, will set over to the side and then I have a couple of sheets of just regular cardstock over here. So um, I'm going to start with, of course, deciding on what I want on the outside of my signature and then I'll just start building on the inside. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to take, like, let's say a um, specialty piece of paper. So let's put it on the inside and then let's go with um, a doily. And then let's put a graph sheet in here. Um, let's put a couple of these notebook papers in here. We will put a, another sheet of the digital paper and then I'll grab one of these uh, dictionary papers here and then let's do an envelope on the inside. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's like eight pieces here. Um, let's go ahead and put a couple more uh, notebook papers here. I'm just doing, doing this, um, to get about 10 sheets there. I'm not, 7 to 10 is good depending on the thickness of your of your paper and then I just turn it over and lay it to the side basically. Okay, the next one what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a just a plain cardstock piece of paper um, and then I'm going to go in with, let's put some notebook paper in here. There's really, again, like no rhyme or reason, especially when you're doing a junk journal um, for it because um, the you don't want it to be even. You don't want each signature to be the same in a junk journal. It just it flows better if it's not. Now, um, in my other one, when I talk about signatures, I was talking about this um, paper here that was thin. 
So I just glued a doily to the inside of the paper. Um, and then I'm going to do something with the flaps later. So, Okay, let's go ahead and put... Um, yeah. Yeah, let's do this other one here. Okay, and now let's do some more um, notebook paper. And I do try to do like the um, like the most cheap, the cheapest paper that I have on my table. I put the most in, so that would be my composition notebook paper or some of my free papers. So um, that's just to. Um, that's about good. So and I don't always count my papers. Um, but I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Please forgive my voice today. I have been sick this past week, and so my train of thought is not um, all there with me today. So I will try to do this to the best of my ability. Okay, so let's do... Um, hmm. Yeah, let's do this paper here, specialty paper, and then let's do um, graph sheet. Looks good. Oh, let me see here. There's a few of these, so let's go ahead and put one of these in the middle here. Do some notebook paper. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's do let's do a piece of cardstock instead. In there. And now let's do notebook paper. Sometimes I don't like to have lines. I like to have a blank sheet and then lines next to it. So that's the reason why I'm kind of um, deciding as I go as to what I want where. But again, like I said, there's no rhyme or reason to this. So just um, just play around with it and see what you like um, with it. You can always go back and change it. You can always go back and rearrange the signature. It doesn't have to be the same um, over and over again. So like I said, so okay, let's do... Um, You know what? Let's do one of these. Okay, yeah, let's do this one. That one's a pretty one. Okay, so that signature is done. And I hope I'm staying on camera. If I'm not, you can yell at me in the comments. That would be fun. <laughs> oh, funny. My mom's yelling at me over here. Any opportunity, right? Can't give them an inch. <laughs> um, so I know this is really boring, but I wanted you to see how I build my signatures because there seems to be a lot of questions over um, building signatures. Like, how do I build a signature? What, you know, what is a signature? How do you do this? You know, with the signatures. And so, really and truly, once you see it done, then it's actually, it gets easier as you watch it, you know, so, um, with that, let's put this little envelope in here, um, what, okay, so I'm going to stop right here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put this summary of benefits pamphlet thing in here, to build that up a little bit. And I'm just straightening it up, keeping it kind of even in there so I know what's going on. And then let's do one of the signatures. I didn't put enough of this paper in there, so I'll have to go back and do that. So let's do this paper here. And then let's put this one in there. And each time you do this, it's going to be different. So there's... You could take these apart and then try to do it again. It'll be different. It'll be all in different orders. It'll be different. It'll align itself differently and everything. So um, I've never gotten one 
that actually comes together the same. So, okay. So this is going to be the center of my um, signature there with a doily in the center. Now, I was talking before about sandwiching this. If you have it in the center, you can work with it in the center because um, it's easy enough to um, work with it. Is it envelopes, anything that's smaller, um, those type of things, you can um, put them in the center of your signature and it seems to work okay. So, and there I have my four signatures together. And that's what I want to put in my book. I'm going to go back though and see. I think there's one of these that I can probably put. Yeah, let's do it right here. Go ahead and stick this digital paper. I do like to use all the digital papers that I have printed out just because I like putting them in the book. That's the whole purpose if you're using a digital kit to use those papers. So um, the one thing I usually have extra of is the little notebook paper um, for that, but that's okay. I mean, you can either add these in or you can just save them for a next book that you want to do, or you might save them to make like, like you might want to go in and put tucks in or make flip outs or something um, for extra journaling space or fold them up and make and do that. So we'll save those for when we do all the tucks and pockets and all that stuff. So, okay, once you get your signatures done, you want to lay them on your table. Let me move my cutter. And, oh, I didn't talk about cutting the papers down. Um, you do want to cut your papers down. And how I do that is I take the one paper just one of my papers that I know, and then I lay it on my folded paper. Do you need help? Yeah, let me bring this over here. If you can hang on to these for uh -huh. me, and then I can get a paper out. Okay, so we'll just use the composition paper and I'll just cut a couple more sheets of paper to show you what I do with it. You just take off, we can probably cut two sheets pretty easily. And um, first off, what you want to do is make sure they're folded together. So, um, this back here, as you can see, there's a little bit of a space. Nope, you can't see that. There's a little bit of space back in here um, because it wraps around all those papers in your book. So what I do is I just fold it, just hang on to it and fold it, and then use my bone folder to get a nice crisp line um, and fold in there. And then what I do is I take wherever I want this done. So if I want... This is where you get to make the decision when you're doing your own papers. What do you want on your own uh, in your own book? So, do you want a little bit of white space up here like a normal book has um, above the lines, or do you want um, it to be all notebook paper? You know, do you not? You have to have the red line in there because you have to have the fold line here, um, but. I mean, I guess you could take it and fold it smaller and make smaller pieces in your book if that's what you choose um, with that. But I like to have a little bit of the white up here at the top. So I usually put this up at the top and then I usually um, just line this up with the edge. I hang on to it. There's no like really measurement. I just put a mark at the top and at the bottom because you got to cut both of them off and then I do a mark on the edge. Let me make sure I'm getting it on the edge here. Yeah. Now I'm making those guide marks because on my paper trimmer I have a metal um, guide line in the Fiskars paper trimmers. If you don't have that guideline and you're using a ruler just Put your ruler on there, and I usually try to find something that I can line up 
with my um, paper edge so and get a straight line on there so I'm lining up the edge of this paper with one of the lines on my ruler and then I'd cut using my exacto knife down across there and then um, on each of those so that I can get a straight line you can use the lines on your um, cutting mats and stuff like that. I find trimmers easier, especially since I have problems with my hands, um, because it's just one quick swipe, um, and then I have the paper cut. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up that um, line with my little metal line, because I know that my paper is then going to be cut out on that line. It's a little under that line, but it works. And then I cut the, doesn't really matter which way you cut, but I just like to trim them all off. You can save these if you want for tuck-ins. I find if I save them though that I end up with tons of little scraps everywhere that getting everything so I don't save them all um, but I do save some especially if I'm going to do some tucks or something like that later and then I line up this one and I cut it off and that makes my paper to where it's the same size as my insert so yeah. so I hope that helps um, with cutting down the paper now of course um, you can use an exact measurement if you know an exact measurement of what you want to you know do you can use that um, you don't have to measure it on the a digital paper but because I'm using a digital paper this is how I want to make sure all my papers are the same size now if you notice some of my papers hang over those will be folded in some of them I folded up from the bottom to make them the same size too so you just make a line and you fold it up that's all you have to do and so it makes kind of pretty um, uh, Var variances on your papers to have different folds and different sizes and different textures and all that um, neat paper stuff that we as paper artists seem to enjoy a lot. Okay, so getting back to the signatures. Um, now if there's something that I didn't finish, a statement I didn't finish or a thought I didn't finish and you wanted me to finish it, please let me know in the comments or send me a message and I'd be happy to answer the question um, you have because like I said I am medicated today so okay so we have our book we said that we've picked out a book we said we really like this book I really like this. Um, <clears throat> these this kit, and so this is the kit that I want to use. So I've cut out the paper. Now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that this um, set of papers will actually fit in my book before I go to do all the work to this book, um, cutting out everything, you know, gutting it from the inside, and then doing the whole cover, and then realizing. Well, my papers aren't going to fit in there, um, or I've got too many signatures. I got to leave one of the signatures out, or even two of the signatures because it's going to make it too thick. So this is how I determine whether or not the book is going to work. This is also a way that you can determine when you go to find a book how to find a book that's what you need. Um, so if you lay your signatures out on your desk, they are all stacked together, as you can see, uh, folded. Uh, spines together and stacked on my desk. I don't want to hold them down. If I hold them down and compress them and I put my ruler here next to them, I'm going to get a half inch. But if I let them just sit here and just lay them on top of each other like this, you set your ruler on your work desk and you're looking at uh, a little bit over, well, it's right at about an inch. And keep in mind too, if you measure this side, because this is where I have my envelopes and those short things over here, compared to this side, this side's going to be a little shorter on the ruler. It's going to measure a little under an inch, and this is going to measure a little over an inch. 
that is because of those extra papers that are in there. So any extra paper that you put in there is going to change your measurement. It's going to change where it is in the paper. So keep that in mind too. So as you're thinking about it and you're thinking about, okay, I'm going to put tags and I'm going to put pockets, I'm going to put flip outs and I'm going to put all kinds of stuff, you know, paper clips, all this stuff in my book, you're going to need some extra room. So if this is an inch, it's me already measuring an inch at just a blank book, just bare bones book, um, and you go, oh, okay, my spine, it's an inch. Well, already you know we have a problem. Because that problem is the fact that this book is not going to be big enough. The spine, it's going to um, create problems and create um, structural problems in your book later on. As you start filling it up and your book's going to actually eventually look like this. It's never going to close and if you try to close it, it's going to break your spine. So, how we determine what size spine we need. I double it. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, well I have four signatures and they're at an inch, so I need at least one, two, three, four spaces that's at least a quarter inch a piece because I want each of my um, signatures to be sewn in a quarter inch apart. So I need at least a two inch spine. I also need a book that is going to be Um, well this paper, it's about, about eight and a quarter will give me a quarter inch on each side, each end. And then as I measure, now this is, this side measure is going to be a little different because you've got all these papers sticking out, right? But remember, these are going to be folded in, these that are way, way out here. You don't want your cover to be out here seven inches and you have two inches to take up, right? So your actual papers are just a little over five inches. Um, on that, uh, you could probably go. Oh, I could be wrong with that. Let's see. Okay, with the fold out and everything, let's do five and let's do six inches. So let's do six inches from that because then if you have any paper clips or anything like that. That'll be a good uh, measurement. So it's going to be eight and a quarter by six inches. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Eight and a quarter by six inches. So it's going to be kind of a funny look, little book, but I think it'll be good. I think it'll be a, a cute little book. So. That's a hard measurement, though, to go out and find a book for. So what I've decided to do is I'm actually going to build a book cover from the ground up um, for this one. Because this one, I want it to be... Um, I need the spine bigger. And so the book that I have on hand is not going to work. But um, the good thing about that is, is if you want to use a book that's already um, pre-made, then um, that's how you're going to determine how it size a book to, to find for yourself. Um, take a measurement of your signatures and find it. Now the other options you have is you take your book and you say, okay, I have a one inch spine, so my signatures can't go over half an inch, so you're going to use two signatures in a one inch spine. Um, and then the book has to be cut down to whatever size your book is. So then you would say, okay, so my inside pages need to be um, five inches by eight and a quarter. So, or, yeah five inches by eight and a quarter. And so you could do that. The thing about it is though, as you start cutting on these pages and making them like, if I cut this right at five inches, I'm cutting um, a lot of the pattern off of my paper and I want my full pattern. So you have to make the decision in your book. What do you want? So do you want to cut your signatures down more to fit in the book that you have and only do two signatures or do you want to build your own cover? I'm going to show you how to build your own cover. I'll also show you how to um, get this book. But that's basically building signatures and finding out what book to put them in. Okay? So um, 
the next video will be on gutting the book. If you want to um, use a book for that, I actually kind of showed how to gut a book. I think instead of gutting this one, I think I'm just going to show you how to build um, a book in the next video. If you want to know how to gut a book, actually watch me gut a book, then just let me know and I'll do a video on that. So, okay. On to the next video.